know it ain't many like six though Never need an intro Yeah, even through the talk and all the chatter I can show them that I know my family matters like a Winslow Outdoors, smoking endo and welcome back to another NFL predictions video for the upcoming NFL season. Today we are looking at possibly the toughest division in football as of right now, the AFC West. This division is crazy. I'll let you know that this division is nuts. A lot of great teams with every every team has a potential to make the playoffs this year. Maybe and there's a chance all of them make the playoffs this year because that's an, that's a possibility now. So let's get into it. We got the Broncos, the Raiders, Chargers, and Chiefs. Let's go ahead and get into it. Starting today's video, we have the Kansas City Chiefs. And let me just start off by saying the Chiefs did not really upgrade the season, but they didn't get worse. And for all you people out there that the, just that think because they lost two key players on the, from this team that this team is going to do bad next year, you're stupid. If you really think the Chiefs are going to fall the way y'all be talking about how they will, you're dumb. Let's not forget, the Chiefs struggled last season and still made the AFC Championship. They struggled and still made the AFC Championship. What? You just... You, this team's not going to go below 11 wins at all. And it all starts with Patrick Mahomes. He makes every, He makes everybody around him better. Just because he lost Tyree Kill doesn't mean anything. It won't mean anything. He can make he can make do with what he has now. I guarantee it. And that's and that's how Mahomes and Andy Reid are. They can make do with whatever people they have with them at this time. They got they lost okay, you lost Tyreek. You lost Byron Pringle. Oh okay. You went and got Juju from the Steelers in free agency and MVS in free agency from the Packers. You are, so, I mean, yeah, you had Tyreek, a top five receiver in this league, a speed demon, but now you got two big body receivers that can go up and get the ball. Maybe, you know, MVS can get downfield fast. We've seen that last year with Aaron Rodgers. Juju's more your inside routes, outside routes, middle of the field type of guy. But they both of these guys can go up and get the ball. Red zone threats, basically. Then you go and draft Sky Moore in the second round. But probably a steal in the second round because the you know George Pickens, I believe George Pickens and Alex Pierce went before him. Okay, and then you still have a speed demon in Miko Hardman. What changed? Nothing about this offense changed. It's literally, literally they didn't change at all. They still have the best tight end in football, Travis Kelsey. Their old line got a little bit better again, as it from last season. What changed? But because they lost Tyree Kill and Tyron Matthew, this team isn't going to be as good. That's stupid. I'm not even a Chiefs fan. That's so stupid. Mahomes, Mahomes makes everybody better. He can make, he can, he, if the Chiefs didn't go out and get these, and get Juju and MVS, Cole would have been looking like a number one receiver. He would have had offers this next offseason, like from any other team. But that's something only Mahomes can do. He can make these guys look good. He can make these guys into pro bowlers. Well, like he did to Marcus Robinson and McCall Hart. Like, that's how he is. And then, of course, you know, you got Clyde edwards in the backfield. That's a big question mark. If, you know, if he can get it going again this year, you know, he was electric his rookie year. You know, kind of, you know, didn't have the same, uh, you know, intensifying runs last year. But if he can get going, this run game can be good. The old line starts going. Chiefs ain't. If they, like I said, they struggled last year. But yes, somehow still made the AFC chip. And their defense isn't even really that all that great. Their secondary is not great. Granted, you did go add Justin Reed and Lonnie Johnson Jr. from the Texans. They get to play together still. You got one of the best, probably if one of the best, if not the best, interior D linemen. Actually, no, I lied. Aaron Donald's the best interior D lineman. But you got a top three interior D lineman with Chris Jones. Okay, yeah, your linebackers aren't the greatest. You lost Tyron Matthew. Your corners aren't the greatest either. But if your offense is scoring 40 plus points a game, all you need is one stop. Once, like you don't even need a stop. Mahomes is gonna put the ball in the end zone every time. You you need probably one stop. But this team is too good. The offense alone can win games. 
And if this defense can step up when needed. This defense can make plays when needed. You just added two good safeties. You have the one of the better D D linemen in the league. If your linebackers and your rest of the secondary can play great, then this team's going back to the AFC chip and maybe the Super Bowl. Like, I don't get I don't get why everybody thinks it's just because they lost a few key players, this team's gonna do bad now. No, they're not. Like I said, Mahomes makes everybody better and he will continue to make everybody better. It's not up for debate. Like, I don't get it. And this is, y'all, it's just hating. I'm like I said, I'm not even a Chiefs fan. But it's stupid to think that if they lost, they just lost Tyreek and Tyrone, they're not going to do bad. They still got the best quarterback in football right now. I didn't, and there's, there's a difference between most accomplished and best quarterback right now. Tom Brady's most accomplished right now. But as of right now in this league, it is between Mahomes and Rodgers for the best QB. Just because how that's just because of how they play, and the Chiefs are gonna do great things again this year, like they always do. So enough with the Chiefs are gonna fall off, cause like I said, they struggled last year, and still made the AFC Championship. So imagine what they do when they don't struggle. Now let's take a look at the upcoming Chiefs schedule. You start off Week One against the Cardinals. You get the win here. Week Two Chargers. That's another win. Week three, Colts. You're gonna destroy the Colts. Daily reminder: If you see a Colts fan, tell them how bad they fucking suck. Anyways, week four, you play the Buccaneers. Don't take your first L. Then you go week five against the Raiders. Chiefs tend to beat the Raiders twice every year. Raiders tend to play decent against them, so I'll give this one to the the Chiefs. Then you got the Bills. I do see the Bills winning this game. And then you play the Niners. You get another win. Then you go. You got a bye week. Then you go to Tennessee, win. Jaguars, win. Chargers, win. Rams, loss. Bengals, win. Broncos, win. Texans, win. Seahawks, win. Broncos, win. And the last week, the Raiders will be another win. At the re- All right, so realistically, I see this Chiefs team going 14-3. and three. The ceiling is 16-1. and one. Now, that's that's pretty high, but... If anybody's going to do it, it's going to be the Chiefs. Might not happen. Like I said, realistically, I only see them winning 14. Their floor, though, I say about 12. Like I said, I don't think this team drops below 11 wins. They're too good of a team. You got too good of a quarterback. Like You got a great coach. It's just impossible for this team to drop below 12 wins, hit 11. But like I said, a realistic record comes out to be 14-3. and three. Moving on to our next team, we have the Oakland, oh, Oakland, fuck, Las Vegas Raiders. God damn it, bro. I'm so used to saying Oakland. Anyways, this team had a lot of problems last year. <laughs> oh, a lot, a lot of problems. You know, you had the Henry Rugg situation, you had the John Gruden situation, and you could tell it really demoralized the team as a whole. But yeah, somehow they were still able to come away with a weak, uh, weak. 18 win against the Chargers last game of the season to clinch a playoff spot the very last one and that's actually crazy to me you know to think that you know all that team went through last year and you know a bunch of bullshit and to somehow still make the playoffs yeah you lost to Cincy in the first round but that's impressive you shouldn't have even made it beating the Chargers a team who was supposed to make it who should have had a better record but it's that was impressive to me, you know. And I think they did they got way better than this year, you know. Starting with Derek Carr, I think he's improved his game a lot. I think he's proven that he can be a top quarterback in this league. And now with Devontae Adams on the squad, I feel like he could prove that. You know, last year he had Ruggs run for a Waller. Not really a true number one, you know. Everybody thought Henry Ruggs would come out to be that true number one. But, of course, you know, all the stuff with him happened. So now you have Devontae Adams. Quite possibly the best receiver in the league. Maybe top two. I think he's still number one. Um, great route runner. Great hands. Can get open anywhere on the field. Can go in, catch any pass thrown to him. Then you got Hunter Renfro in the slot. Or, you know, now he'll play the two. But he's a great slot receiver. You know, he's his cuts are so quick. He's not, he's not particularly fast. But his cuts are so quick. He can get in and out of routes so fast. It's crazy. Uh, Tyron Johnson, I love Tyron Johnson. I think he'll play a big role this year in the Raiders offense, being the number three guy. And then, of course, you have a top three tight end in Darren Waller. Like, 
there's not much that needs to be said. I know he is dealing with a hamstring injury right now. Uh, you know, he's been set back in camp and practice and stuff. But, you know, he's still top three when healthy. Maybe even top two. But this Raiders team, you know, the receiving core and Derek Carr have gotten better. And you could clearly see, you know, this team has great weapons around it. And if they can get jo- Josh Jacobs going again, who knows what this team can do. You know, they, maybe they can have a better record than 9-8 and eight and actually secure a playoff spot earlier before the, the last week of the season. But, you know, Josh Jacob ha- has some inconsistencies. The old line is very inconsistent as well. You know, Derek Carr was hit a lot last year. Um, and there's just a lot. It, it's just really a lot of questions around the offensive line. That's really all there is. But, you know, they, the Raiders upgraded definitely. And you could tell Derek Carr has gotten much better. And then, you know, you look on the defensive side, you have Max Crosby and Chandler Jones, two great edge rushers who can get to the quarterback fast when needed. Their secondary and linebacker core isn't really good. Yeah, you have Denzel Perryman leading that linebacker core. You have Divine Diablo, yeah. But, you know, it's really, they're not great in what they do yet, you know. Denzel Perryman's been around the league long, so that's that veteran leadership. But their secondary, you know, it's quite young still. You know, you got John Abraham. You got Nate Hobbs. You lost Casey Hayward in the offseason. You know, it's just there's a lot of, you know, defense is a lot of question marks with along with the old line. But like I said, this Raiders team can compete. You know, there was a lot of games they should have lost last year that they won. And that's because, you know, like, and even then, like I said, it's like um, with even with all the problems last year, to find a way to win close games like that and somehow make the playoffs is crazy. You know, it's just so, but I feel like this team has put themselves in a position to win more games this year. And I feel like that's exactly what they'll do again. And it's going to be, it's going to be hard, you know, competing with the rest of the teams in this division for that top spot, especially with the Chiefs who are going to, who've won it every year since 2015. It's hard, but I feel like the Raiders have done enough to improve and actually get to where they want to be at. Now let's take a look at the Raiders schedule. You start off the year by playing the Chargers. I think you open up the year with a loss. You know, the Chargers and Raiders always go back and forth every year. They tend to split the series. So I'll give this one to the Chargers. Um, You play the Cardinals. I think you win. Titans, another win. Broncos, win. Then you play the Chiefs, a loss. So you already have 3-2 going into the bye. You play the Texans, win. Saints, loss. Jaguars, win. Colts, win. Denver, win. Seahawks, win. Chargers, win. Rams, loss. Patriots, loss. Steelers, win. Niners, I think I believe I said the Raiders win this game. And the Chiefs, you end the year with the Chiefs and you will take another loss. Realistically speaking, I see this Raiders team going 11-6. and six. Not enough to win the division by any means. You know, you'll be a few games behind KC, but enough to get into that fifth spot wildcard spot. You know, um, you play a lot of tough teams. You, you have a lot of tough teams in your division. So realistically, with thinking 11 and 6, your ceiling could be 13 and 4, and I give your floor about 9 and 8. You know, like I said, you, Raiders tend to drop some games here and there. Maybe they'll win a game they're not supposed to win. Like I said, so you know, realistically speaking, 11 and 6, you get the wild card spot. You're in the playoffs. Now let's take a look at the Los Angeles Chargers. Everybody's favorite team to meet right. Oh my god. I have never met more people in my life than I have fucking meat riders of the set of the Los Angeles Chargers. We get it. You think Justin Herbert's the savior of the world. Jesus Christ, we know. Good lord, y'all are worse than fucking Colts fans. Actually, no, y'all not. Actually, no, depends. Justin Herbert's stands are probably on the same level as Colts fans. Anyways, I'm off topic. Uh, like I said, this Chargers team is good, though. They added a lot of weapons in the offseason as well. So, it all starts with Justin Herbert, though. Oh, my God. Justin Herbert. The Justin Herbert stands are coming out. I get the hype. I do. He's a great kid. Great football player. Knows how to make plays. Can t- throw the ball so well. He has broken a lot of records over these past two years, too. So, like I said, this offense runs through him. He's one of the better quarterbacks right now. I would not say he's top five or maybe even top ten right now. But he has, by the end of his career, if he's able to get a few Super Bowls, maybe. The way he plays. So we'll just have to see. And the weapons around him are crazy. Keenan Allen, one of the best route runners in the league. An underrated receiver. Not top ten, in my opinion. But he's one of the most underrated receivers in the league. 
Have Austin Eckler coming out of the backfield. Great pass catching back. Can break tackles. Can He's quick. Gets in and out of cuts fast. You know, he's good. You got Mike Williams, who can get downfield fast. Who can go up and high point the ball. I know y'all. I know y'all seen Mike Williams play. Broken cat. He's broken catch almost about anything. Just throw it up to him. He's gonna go up and get it, cause he's built like that. He can go up and get it. And that's what the. That's how the, I love how the Chargers utilize him. I'm not gonna talk about the tight ends, cause I fucking hate Jared Cook. He likes to drop the ball a lot. He's a fumble machine. Far uh, Parnum, you know, he had a scary injury last year, but he's also great. You know, if the Chargers are able to utilize him, he can be good. And then the offensive line is amazing. You know, you got Corey Lindsley and Rashawn Slater leading the bunch. Like, this team is great. You know, the, those those O-line, those two specific O-linemen give Herbert enough time to go through each progression and make the certain throw that he needs to make. And that's all he needs. You give Justin Herbert, like, two seconds, that's all he needs. Bro, but he's getting, like, five, six to seven seconds. Because his line is so good. And he has some of the best... Not the best receivers. He has some great receivers that can get open. It's just, you know, this team is poised to win, but they can't. They, I don't know why, but they can't. And y'all are going to blame injuries, but that's not an excuse. They can't. But this defense is probably one of the scariest now than it ever has been. You got Joey Bosa coming off one end. You got Khalil Mack coming off the other end. Now, in the secondary, you got a ball hawk in J.C. Jackson. Most interceptions since he was been since in the league since he's been drafted. You got Asante Samuel Jr., who balled out last year. You got Derwin James, arguably a top five safety in this league. Who's going to... On paper, it's scary. You know? The defense is scary. This offense is scary. But can they stay healthy? And this is this team's problem. They can't stay healthy. And all the excuses last year. Oh, if this team was healthy, we could have been going farther and farther. I'm like, but y'all didn't. And the thing is, it looks good on paper. All the players I just named on this defense, J.C. Jackson has a history of getting hurt. Bosa, you know, he had a couple injuries. Uh, Khalil Mack has injury uh, history of injuries. Derwin James has his history of injuries. You know, but if this team can stay healthy... If, and that's a big if, because some of these players are getting up in there in age. Like Khalil Mack, he's, he's getting up there. Keenan Allen's getting up there. But if they can stay healthy, win games they're supposed to win, because they lost a lot of games they were supposed to win last year. Like the last week of the season against the Raiders. Came all the way back from what, like two scores down, 16 points down, to tie the game, send it to OT, and you blew it. Because you wanted to call a timeout. That was on the coaching staff. Can't really blame that on the players. That's the coaching staff. But if you can win the games you're supposed to win and not blow it, you'll go far. You can, can probably compete with the Chiefs. And get first place. Who knows? But that's the thing. We don't know yet. We have to wait and see. Everybody stays healthy. Herbert balls out again like he's he's going to do. If Eckler, Keenan Allen, and Mike Williams can stay healthy, this team is poised to go deep into the playoffs. Now let's take a look at the Chargers' upcoming schedule. Opening up against the Raiders, win. You play the Chiefs week two, loss. You have the Jaguars, win. Texans, win. Browns, win. Broncos, loss. Seahawks, win. Bye week, they come out of the bye week. Falcons, win. Niners, win. KC, loss. Cardinals, win. Raiders, loss. Dolphins, win. Titans, win. Colts win, Rams loss, Broncos win. Realistically speaking, I see this team going 12 and 5 if they can ever, if everybody stays healthy and plays the way they're supposed to play this year. Ceiling, I'll give them 14 and 3 and their floor is 10 and 7. Like I said this team is really good. They're going to win a lot of games. Question is, can they stay healthy and will they stay healthy throughout the season? And like I said earlier, they tend to drop a lot of games they, they should win. Like last year. You know, they lost to the Texans last year. Game they should have won. Lost to the Patriots, I believe. Another game they should have won. Lost to the Raiders in the final week to miss out in the playoffs. But like I said, realistically, 12-5 uh, and five seasons in order for this Chargers team. 
Now let's take a look at the final team in the division, the Denver Broncos, who also made a lot of vacu a lot of moves this offseason. You know, this team has been bad for a while. <laughs> this team's been bad since Peyton Manning left, let's be real, you know. All the QB carousel changes, you had, what, Trevor Simeon, uh, Brock Osweiler, uh, Paxton Lynch, Drew Locke, like, Teddy Bridgewater. It's been a struggle. It's been a struggle for this Broncos team, you know, the past, since 2015. After Peyton won the Y'all Super Bowl, after Von Miller won that Super Bowl for y'all, that's better. Y'all suck. No, there's no debate about it. This team's garbage. But who knows? They just traded for Russell Wilson. Top 10 quarterback as of right now. He's getting up there in age. He's a Super Bowl champion, though. Led the Seahawks to two straight Super Bowls, winning one time. You know, but I think Russell Wilson will change this team. I think he's going to bring in some culture that this team hasn't had since Peyton Manning left and since they've been bad. And I think he'll do a lot for this team. I think he'll win them more games than this team's used to winning. And that's all the honest truth. You know, you know, last year in Seattle, he was coming off, uh, you know, in finger injury that kept him sideline most of the year. His old line wasn't that great. Granted, his old line's still not great in Denver. You know, Denver's old line is might be worse than Seattle's old line. But you know, I think Russ will change. I think he'll play better this year. The old line can keep up. You know, he'll play great. He'll play like an MVP for the first few weeks, like he always does. But um, it's really the old line, and that's the scary part. Like I said, he wanted out of. It's not that he wanted out of Seattle. It's that Seattle didn't have a great old line. Neither does Denver. So that's where it's like, well, what what changed, honestly? What changed? You know, but the biggest difference is, you know, now you have a one-two punch at running back. You know, Melvin Gordon, who can come in, break off some big yardage, get some, you know, catch out of the backfield when needed. Quick, elusive, can run through you. You know, great running back. Then you got Javante Williams, who can just run through you. You know, he's like, it's, they, Melvin Gordon and Javante have some similarities in their play style. They're elusive, fast, can run through you, can catch. But Javante, you know, he can move. Like, he can, he will carry a lot of people on his back just for an extra yard if he has to. And that's what I like, you know. Uh, and last year, you know, they had the same, almost the same amount of touches and almost the same amount of yardage. If that is not consistency, then I don't know what is, you know. So if, if they can keep those two consistent, just like how they did last year. The running game in Denver would be great, you know. Both almost eclipsed over a thousand yards, had this about the same amount of touches, so that would be good. Then you look at your wide receivers. Um, you know, you got Jerry Judy, you got Corbin Sutton, Tim Patrick just went out with the ACL injury, but now you get KJ Hamler back. Uh, you also have No Fant, you know, from Seattle, from that Seattle. Actually, wait, I'm dumb. No Fant went to Seattle. I'm stupid. I'm oh lord. Anyways. But, you know, I wouldn't take any of these guys over DK and Tyler Lockett, per se. But I do think, you know, Russ, having, multi, having you know, someone like Jerry Judy can get off the line fast. You know, great route runner. You know, you have Corlin Sutton. If he can stay healthy, he can go up, catch the ball. KJ Hamler's a speed demon. So, like I said, I wouldn't take those three guys over DK and Tyler Lockett necessarily. But they're still good at what they do, and they can be great. And, you know, with having Russ as their quarterback now, they might even be better, you know. I don't think they were able to thrive with Drew Locker, Teddy Bridgewater, Trevor Simeon, and Brock Osweiler, you know. So I think they'll play better just because of Russell Wilson. But, you know, the O-line is the biggest thing that, you know, we all have to worry about. And the defense isn't really all that great either. You have Justin Simmons, a top five, maybe top ten safety. Um, however you want to look at him, he's a great defense. He's, he's the leader of that defense, you know, he can get, you know, he can stop the run. He can play zone. He can play man. He can go up, get the ball. He can go up, get it out of the receiver's hands. You know, he's great. He got a young, nice corner in Patrick Sertain. He played amazing last year. You know, he's going to play amazing this year. He's a great, he's a great corner, has great footwork, great eyes, can read the receivers very well. And I think he'll just do that over again this year. But, you know, like I said, it's it's really hard to, you know, the O-line and the rest of the defense, other than Justin Simmons and Denzel, or Denzel, Pat Sertain, you know, it's really iffy. You know, everything's iffy about this team. But I feel like 
they still can't compete with what they have, you know. Yeah, their D-line, their front seven isn't the best, you know, but they can still, you know, get into the backfield when necessary. This O-line, maybe they show some improvement, who knows. But as of right now, I do think this team will be slightly better, but not the point where they can win the division type of better. Time to take a look at the Broncos' upcoming schedule for this next season. You start off with Seattle. Russell Wilson, revenge game, you take the win. Okay, you got the Texans, win. Niners, loss. Raiders, loss. Colts, loss. Chargers, loss. Okay, starting to fall, fall a little bit. Jets, win. Jaguars, win. Two big wins before the bye week. Come out, play the Titans, loss. Play the Raiders. I think I said Broncos win this one. Okay, we'll give them the win. Panthers, win. Ravens, loss. Chiefs, loss. Broncos, or Cardinals, not Broncos. Cardinals, loss. Rams, loss. Chiefs, loss. Chargers, loss. Realistically speaking, the Broncos only go 6-11. and 11, And it's not because their team is necessarily bad. But it's because of how their schedule stacks up against them. You know, they're playing much better teams than what they are. You know, you have those, and you know, may, you have, maybe you have a few trap games too. Who knows? You know, maybe you get a trap game in your favor, so your ceiling could be 9-8. and eight. Your floor, 5-12. and 12. But you're, the, it's just your schedule. It's just, the schedule is not in y'all's favor this year. Your team's going to be good, but I don't think the Broncos go anywhere again just because of how tough the, te- the teams of, that they're playing are going to be, you know. And plus, you're in a tough division. It's going to be hard to win games. You know, and I just don't see the Broncos doing that much better. I want to thank you for tuning in once more to one of my crappy videos. Got four more divisions left. After we do the divisions, I'll go through my playoff predictions and how I think the playoffs will play out. Who's going to win Super Bowl. All that good stuff. Um, stay on the lookout for some Madden 23 content dropping this week. And, of course, you get your weekly out of context on Saturday. But, you know, we're going to keep going through these videos. We're going to try to get done. Bef- we're definitely going to get done before the start of the regular season. So, um, just stay tuned and thanks for watching. Blood don't make it Loyalty is what I said.